Uh, let's see. So I just wanted to, you know, just kick it off with a couple of news stories. Um, there's like so much happening. I mean, duh, there's a lot going on in the world. But um, one of the first things that I just wanted to note, because last time I was on last week was um, last Tuesday was the day of the or the day the news broke of the Brussels um, attacks. And um, I just read a story this morning that um, actually the third person that was arrested that was involved in connection with the, with, with, with the, the Brussels um, terrorist attacks is actually the wrong person and officials had to uh, let him go. So um, while it's, you know, the other two people that were caught were brothers and from the different accounts, it seems like those were actually the right people. The third person involved was not actually one of the three people um so so there's always this rush to do something and to get the people you know sometimes an abundance of caution sometimes like taking a step back um can go a long way i mean it's definitely understandable why you would want to act quickly but at the same time you run the risk of you know catching the wrong person and and when we're talking about terrorist attacks you know snatching up the wrong person particularly when we're talking about here in the u.s with the way you know the patriot act and other provisions work there's no, there's no, there's no um, due process involved, right? So here in the states, you know, there's no due process. There, there are, you know, accounts from people who were um, rounded up and snatched up in terms of, you know, Patriot Act seizures and stuff, and they're just like, oh, oops, our bad. If even that much, so um, I thought that was just a little interesting when I when I first read it today. Like, really, so much happened um, in Bernie related, unburning related news. I know. You all have probably seen that Donald Trump's campaign manager, that charges are being pressed against him for his um, what what's being called a battery against um, the Breitbart re reporter. Um, I, I saw a tweet earlier that Donald Trump questioned whether or not the bruising on her arm from where she was rough, rough handled um, were possibly there from something else. You know, <laughs> I can't and I won't even waste my time with him. Um, so, so moving on, um, Susan Sarandon, gotta love Susan, um, the clients, one of my, my favorite movies, uh, she, she has a way with words, you know, um, Susan Sarandon gets asked these questions and she has no chill. She speaks her mind. She says what she has to say and she backs it up with her own opinion. Now, whether you agree with her or not, um, I saw tweets earlier like, oh, my God, how can you call yourself a progressive and say you'll support Donald Trump? You know, when you actually we, we once again have the problem, when you actually look at the statements, when you listen to the statements, when you read the transcript, what you said, you know. It, it's it's not the way, of course, it's being played out in the media. I mean, that's what that's what people want to do. Right. They They always want to paint things a certain way because there's a certain narrative that needs to be portrayed. You know, Senator Sanders is doing really well. Um, came off a kick-ass weekend, um, a three-peat, so to speak. <laughs> and and now, you know, he has a surrogate um, who has said some things that people don't necessarily agree with or don't like her framing, right? And instead of looking at the ludicrous, you know, nature of the, con con the con conversations, we are in the middle of, a, of an election, right? We're in the middle of a, of a primary season. We're still actively engaged fighting, grinding daily, right, for our candidate. Why are you asking people Hillary or Donald? What the hell are you talking about? I mean, right now, neither. Like, that's not where we're at right now. We still can pull this out. We can still do this. So we are working. You know, there are events going on. There are people organizing. There are people engaged. There are people active trying to get us distracted these conversations about Hillary or Donald, or why are you burning your butts? Look, I'm 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 all about Bernie right now. I don't want to talk about nobody else. I'm not talking about contingency plans. I don't want to hear it because this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm about. So I really think for you know Chris Matthews for people to sit in their positions because truthfully, you know, for them they don't feel in the moral imperative to have the level of change that we need to start ushering in. It's not you know it's a great talking point. It, it's a good you know. Uh, 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 a segment on a show for ratings, but for them, it's not about their livelihood. It's not about their life. In fact, electing someone like Bernie Sanders could possibly 
you know, be detrimental to their livelihood, right? To their ability to do things and go about the way they're going about the news. I'm sorry, I said Chris Matthews. It was actually Chris Hayes, which really actually disappoints me even further because Chris Hayes is my boo. But um, he and, uh, you know, he, he's right along up there on the shit list with the rest of them because, you know, instead of, I've always counted on Chris Hayes, you know, he's a little, I think we're around the same age or whatever. Another New York person, you know, and, and I always count on him to be objective, to really, you know, put out a perspective that isn't very well represented um, elsewhere. And the problem with even with him as, you know, one of the only two remaining like liberal um, newscasters on MSNBC, he, he, he feeds into the same bullshit, excuse my language, the same nonsense that um, Chris Matthews and others do. So it was kind of easy to mix them up there for a second. But um, Susan Sarandon's response, of course, has has gotten pushback from so many. Um, you know, you have your your black Twitter elites upset because how could you support Donald Trump? Like, what's wrong with you? You can't be a progressive. Whatever. I'm not even touching that. How can you support Hillary Clinton, especially after her APAC speech? How progressive are you? But that's a whole nother story, right? Um, we have a very interesting piece in the Washington Post today by Jonathan Capert about this subject. Um, why is it interesting? Well, it's interesting because Capert didn't go like bat crazy all over Susan Sarandon. It's actually a rather balanced piece. I don't necessarily agree with all of his conclusions. Um, particularly, he notes that while like her passion is admirable. It's that blind fury and, and that blind, you know, allegiance that um, can be detrimental and destructive. And I think what, you know, the mainstream is seeing as destructive in terms of our Bernie focus, we are laser focused. We are Bernie only. Well, I, I say we, I mean me as someone who's a grassroots volunteer for, for Senator Bernie Sanders campaign. I can't speak for all of you, but um you know, for people like me, we are laser focused. We don't want to talk to you about anything else. You know, I mean, if we're going to talk about Donald Trump, the only thing I can talk to you about Donald Trump is why have you like built your monster and then you want to blame everybody else because he's all up in the business. Like, so, so his, so this notion that, 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 that Donald Trump would be destruction, right. For our, our political economy, um, for, for our, our, our country as a whole, like this, this fear mongering that happens, right. That was the same situation we were in in 2000, where we had an okay Democratic contender. You know, Gore was okay. We were coming off of a pretty decent, at the time, we felt it was a pretty decent, you know, Democratic presidency, and there was a moral imperative to keep a Democrat in office. Well, clearly that didn't work for everybody because despite all the issues we had in Florida, there were still those. You can go on Twitter and just do a poll and ask people. There are Democrats who actually, of their own free volition, not any foo-foo craziness who voted for George Bush. One of my friends from grad school, openly, black man, openly admits that he voted for George Bush over Al Gore for various reasons. One, he wasn't a fan of Clinton and Gore got associated with, with being Clinton. Two, he thought for whatever reason that George was going to be better for small businesses. I don't, I don't know, hindsight's 2020, but there are people, when you go look, look at the numbers of the how many Democrats voted for George Bush, because the story we're always fed is that Nader stole it. It was all because of Nader. It was all Nader's fault. Came down to Florida. If people hadn't voted for Ralph Nader, if Ralph Nader hadn't been in the race, Al Gore would have been our president. I saw a statistic recently that like 24,000 voters in question voted for Ralph Nader, where 300,000 voters in question voted for George Bush. Democratic voters, right? Registered Democrats in the general election. Yeah, that doesn't that doesn't wash. That doesn't you don't know, mash up. So so why is that all relevant to the Susan Randon conversation? Because the, the other thing that you know everyone always points out is one, she's a rich white woman, and so if Donald Trump is president, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect her life at all. Two, she's not a real Democrat. Y'all heard that before, right? Because I mean, who else isn't? Raise your hand if you're not a real Democrat, right? That that's what that's what everyone claims. You know, I hear that on a regular basis. Well, if you're supporting Bernie Sanders, you just might as well leave the party. I don't think they realize that they can't win an election without all of us. Like, we take our numbers. You don't have enough to beat the other side. But it's okay. I digress. Um, you know, 
this notion that somehow supporting a third party candidate, or in this case, Susan Sarandon having first supported Ralph Nader, right? And now supporting Bernie Sanders, that somehow her opinions, her ideas are irrelevant, that she could not possibly have an understanding for what is at stake because she lives on this perch somewhere. It's really interesting seeing this criticism come from other privileged people who are completely out of freaking touch with what is going on right now. We have a, a political economy, a political society that, that is okay <laughs> with fraud. I mean, we're okay with fraud because you know what? They apologize. They said everything is okay. My bad, no big, let's go play around the golf. So, so you know, everything's cool. Um, Frank, not Frank, right? I mean, we have not Frank, so we're perfectly fine. No, why do we need to wait for the, the bottom to fall out again, possibly even worse than the day before to do something? Shouldn't we be proactive? Shouldn't we be, shouldn't we be working in a preemptive measure to make sure that not only our economy, but that opportunity is the strongest that it can be for everyone, not just those people who happen to have a buddy, you know, who plays golf with somebody that sits in Congress or the White House. Like, that's just not OK. You know, shouldn't we make sure that everything is good for everyone, regardless of whether or not they can afford to pay to go to a fancy dinner with George Clo George and Amal Clooney? I mean, like, this is what's bothering me. Let's so fine. Let's let's let Susan Sarandon, you know, what I'm saying, girl, you really need to take a deep breath. And you don't need to answer everything just because it's asked of you. Right. There's a lesson to learn. But part of what I love about Sanders' um, surrogates, they go off the farm. They say what they want to say. They speak their mind and they stand by it 150,000 percent. So I love the fact that people stand up and speak their convictions and can talk about the issues. When Susan Sarandon is talking about how maybe something drastic needs to happen to shake people up and get their attention, because right now it is a whole lot of people out there that are still really complacent. They're still trying to sell us on this incrementalism, inter incrementalism bullshit that, you know, uh, the little crumbs we're going to get from Hillary are going to be good enough and everything's going to be OK. Well, that brings me to kind of to my next point. There is a really great institute, a great organization that you all should check out. It's the um, African American Policy Forum, www.aapf.org. Look them up on Twitter and on Facebook. And right now this week, they're having a really great series. Um, and I just lost my train of thought. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but they're having a really great um series right this week and you know this idea that you know people like susan sarander who are saying like we don't need incremental change we need we need to be working for change now these people who are saying oh that's wrong she doesn't know what she's talking about oh whatever they don't understand what it is to be an everyday regular working american like seriously and today, you know, because of this, this series that um, the American Policy Forum is having, um, the African American Policy Forum is having this week, um, today's subject was basically about single mothers. And this is the 50, this year's the 50th anniversary of the Moynihan Report, right? And the Moynihan Report basically set in place uh, 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 decades, just generations of stigmatizing and demonizing um, black black women um, and 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 a lot of other problematic um, logic, right? So one of the things that came across today and many people were tweeting messages and just talking about the struggle of being a single mother and being a single black mother. I mean, being a single black mother, you are you are considered the bane of everything that is wrong. You, you, you're, you're the fulcrum. You are what's wrong with America. You are the reason why America's screwed up. You're the reason why there's crime. You're the reason why the, the economy is bad because we're too busy giving you welfare benefits because you're having so many damn babies. What? What? Black women aren't even a huge proportion of the welfare rolls. We've never been. We've always worked. We've always held it down for every damn body and a mama. And just because we not mammying out for you anymore doesn't mean that we can now be trashed on a whole different level. And so it was very interesting reading all these tweets from different women, you know, about how hard it is as, you know, as a working woman that, you know, if you, if women like, 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 like this notion that women are poor, that single mothers are poor because they're not married. 
No, single mothers are poor because they're stuck in low wage jobs disproportionately. They're poor because they're disproportionately, you know, stuck with limited, you know, in, in certain life chances and limited education. There's a lot of reasons why people exist, you know, and we could say like, oh, well, most people aren't poor. Okay, whatever. I'm not going to get into you like, well, technical poverty and what in real life, you know, things like fight for 15, which Secretary Clinton is, does not embrace no matter what wording SCIU and the rest of her team try to use. The fact that fight for 15 is so intrinsic and crucial OK, to to lifting out families from poverty, if you just by increasing the minimum wage to fight for fifteen dollars an hour and note the, the, the call, which Bernie Sanders has fully embraced as a part of his platform and has clearly indicated his support for check out good jobs on Facebook um, in terms of support, because he's also stood with uh, senator workers, cafeteria workers or whatever, and their and their fight for increasing the minimum wage as well. The fact that when you do that boost, it disproportionately says low wage workers are disproportionately women of color. Boosting the income automatically gives an increase to families everywhere. Now we could keep talking about oh race and Bernie's only about white issues, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I didn't realize that uh, minimum wage was a white only issue. I didn't realize that healthcare was a white only issue because again, we're disproportionately underinsured, uninsured, paying high premiums, unable to afford our medications. Um, I didn't realize that paid family leave was a white only issue. Like this, this, this stuff is getting ridiculous now because first it's this, oh, nobody said that Bernie only gets the white vote. Yes, she did. You say it to us all the time. And then you want to say, oh, now you're trying to be a token. I ain't nobody's damn token because I can think for myself and stand on my own two damn feet. You have a problem because you don't agree with me. Are you mad? Are you mad because the revolution? And let's also be clear, talking about a political revolution and whatever revolution you over there sitting in your angry corner talking about, I mean, maybe they're not the same thing. Because if you think that the only thing revolutionary is racial equality and you don't want to talk about um, any other form of social injustice, if you don't want to talk about economic injustice, if you're not trying to talk about uh, uh, um, um, injustices based on sexual orientation, et cetera, et cetera, then you ain't as revolutionary or woke as you think you are. I'm just saying, like, let's just put that out there, right? Like, I really actually had a whole long list of things I was going to talk to y'all about, but like some stuff happened on Twitter today and it's really bad to bring, you know, your Twitter fights into real life. But I really do think that we need to have a conversation about some issues. We need to have a conversation about this nonsense that the stuff Bernie Sanders is talking about are white issues only. They are people issues, right? It's a human rights issue. Raul Castro just said that to President Obama. The fact that Education and healthcare are not made equally available to everybody in America is a human rights issue. And I absolutely agree. So we can keep talking about how this, that, and the other is a white only issue or white people's concerns are only the privileged people. Only privileged people can be concerned about minimum wage. What the hell are you talking about? Well, campaign finance reform, do you not realize the fact that groups like the Koch brothers or even George Soros? Oh, wait, I can't mention George Soros, right? Because a bunch of y'all get your funding from him. My bad. So, like, seriously, and I did not mean to have a 20 minute rant. I do apologize. I actually had news and stuff I wanted to talk about. But, you know, like I said, stuff just already happened. This, th th there's just so much going on right now. And I really think that the only way to convey it right now is to just talk to you straight off the dome, you know, mano a mano. Like, seriously. You know, this, 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 this is all flowing together. Just stay with me, y'all. This notion that Bernie Sanders, on the one hand, is only talking about white issues. He's only talking about angry white man issues. You know, there are quite a few people who live in D.C. or they're in New York or they're in Atlanta, places that have issues, right, with income inequality within the black community. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia has some of the most, if not the most, huge disparities in income and wealth and opportunity, right, within the city itself. There's also issues here and in other places with, you know, poverty suburbs. Basically, people move out, you know, to, to get better. And then those people who live there move away from those people. And then you basically have now um, created external 
you know, poor communities, whereas usually we think of them being located in certain neighborhoods within an urban center, you now have these same similar situations existing out with low income housing, et cetera, et cetera, out in the suburbs. Well, Anoa, you know, no, Concent you have concentrations of poverty and low income workers without opportunity and development. If we're not actively involved and engaged in dealing with disinvestment, or dealing with unequal and uneven investment, then we're contributing to the same system we're claiming is oppressive. I mean, if you're going to keep talking about how race, 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 and by the way, okay, when you only sit there and criticize Bernie and the Bernie bros and blah, blah, and you disregard and completely ignore how Hillary Clinton and her supporters completely make a mockery out of feminism, out of conversations of privilege and intersectionality. If you can't have a realistic and upfront conversation and debate about those issues, then you just need to fall back. That's my opinion. This is my space and I'm going to say it. Now you do what you do in your space, but when you start interfering and encroaching on my space, then we're going to have an issue. Because today, today, and I don't care if y'all got more Twitter followers than me, I am not backing down. You don't know me very well at all, but you're going to learn soon. I had someone come into my Twitter, my Twitter feed today well, you know, now all of a sudden, you know, Bernie was 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 white. That's why he won Vermont. And now all of a sudden, he's straight out of Brooklyn. So he's going to win New York. Fish, really? Like, seriously? Who are you talking to? Thank you so much. When people say dumb stuff like that, well, Bernie's white, so he wins these states. But now all of a sudden, he's down. Yeah, that's what we've been trying to tell you. But you don't want to listen. You're making our point for us. Because that's a mainstream medium rhetoric. The only reason why he won Vermont, the only reason why he won Maine is because he's white and those are white places. Thank you for, 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 for pointing out the, the, the ludicrousness of those types of, of statements and, and headlines. Like, appreciate you. Then it's like, um, well, he has white male privilege. White women talking about white men and their white male privilege. Y'all can go someplace. Seriously. And please don't come at me about, well, not all white women. There are some very good articles y'all can read about white feminists and why we call it that. Maybe not all people, maybe not all white women who are feminists fall into that category of what we call white feminism, but you need to read it before you say, well, not all. I'm not talking to you then. If it don't apply to you, then it don't apply to you. Keep walking. Like seriously, because this notion that white male privilege prevents you from being able to do something. It's not that you're against white male privilege, right? You're just upset that you don't have it too. And that's not the same as equality for all of us. That's not the same as standing with your sisters to make sure that um, honey, who's making $10 an hour, and that's being very generous in today's standards. It's not, if you're not standing with her for her right to paid sick leave and family leave, if you're not standing with her for her right to $15 an hour, if you're not standing with her when she is being derided, demeaned by the powers that be as if the, the welfare queen which is the image that your girl and her husband perpetrated for, for political expediency. If you're not willing to stand with us, I don't want to hear you talking about white male privilege. And, 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 and white male privilege is an argument that's being thrown out there at Bernie Sanders as if somehow that, that justifies something. Well, he has white male privilege, so of course he can talk about these things. Huh? Well, he has white male privilege, so of course everyone's going to go easy on him. Well, you, you have white male privilege, that's why you won't vote for Hillary. Huh? What? Somehow Hillary's a victim of, of white male privilege? Hillary Clinton, who is one half of the most powerful political duo in the country? Are you serious? I mean, we can debate about that, but seriously, the Clintons are a powerful political machine. We saw that in 2008 with Obama. We saw that how everybody rolled over when she had no actual political spheres of her own and became a senator. Most people work up to being senator, right? She just rolled in there and did it. So please miss me with all that. This notion that, oh, a woman couldn't, oh, calling her establishment is misogyny and blah, blah, blah. Huh? Are you serious? She wasn't an establishment person when she endorsed Andrew Cuomo over Zephyr Teachout in 2014. Are you serious? Like, no, really? Because women got to stand together, right? We got to we got to all stand together unless you are a progressive upstart named Zephyr Teachout running in New York, New York for governor against the establishment, darling, the son of a former governor, the brother of a CNN anchor. Right. So we can all miss me with all that stuff. Now, <laughs> I, I, I've used up 
um, half of the show already. Like this is this is wild. But um, I just for everyone who's actually here right now, like thank you so much again. Um, there, there's a lot of stuff going on, and and I have a guest coming on in a little bit. But the last thing I kind of wanted to touch on just before uh, we get into talking about the main event for the evening um, was was an article I read in uh, the USA Today, I believe it was yesterday, um, written by Soledad O'Brien. Soledad, another person I respect very much. But this notion that somehow the campaign, excuse me, the presidential election no longer cares about Black Lives Matter, Black Lives better issues and it's all focused about angry white people issues you see this this dichotomy it's a false dichotomy actually because what we're calling angry white people issues at least in terms of bernie sanders and the democratic side and hillary clinton and the things we're talking about are actually issues we're talking about economics we're talking about health care we talk about immigration reform these are actually issues that some of the black lives matter platforms themselves actually expound upon now maybe they're not to the same degree right not ever trying to say it's the same exact thing, but at the same time, there are so many issues that people are actually talking about in their actual organizations and platforms that are being talked about in presidential, you know, forum. But to say that, you know, it's no longer a concern for anyone is actually really ridiculous because Bernie Sanders, ever since, you know, the conversations were first had with him about how he needs to expand the platform more, it has been a continuous thing that he has done. And maybe, now I haven't heard Hillary Clinton talk about say her name, but she's about to go to Harlem, y'all. So, so she's probably going to, you know, have an accent and, you know, you know, do the whole nine or whatever. She hasn't tried it out her black moms in a while. Um, but I'm sure that's coming soon since we're going back to more ethnic places again. Um, you know, there are organizations out there that are doing really great work that have these things in the platform. You know, we're talking about issues of reproductive justice. You have Sister Song. We're talking about issues of of addressing the prison industrial complex. You know, you have the group Critical Resistance. Like there's so much work being done out there. You have the lawyer group, NCBL. You know, for people who are all of a sudden now on, on the reparations train, which again, debunking misinformation, you know, from Hillary supporters, Hillary, Barack, no main, very, very, there's very little bit mainstream support from anyone about reparations. Now, is that okay? No. But if you're really seriously, honestly interested, and that is like an issue for you, a real issue for you, you can check out Encobra, okay? N-C-O-B-R-A, Encobra. That's an organization that could be a good starting point for you since you're so concerned about the reparations movement. Because I'm really tired of all these, 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 these ridiculous talking points. If you don't like Bernie Sanders, if his issues don't matter in your life, that is fine. Just say that. But to try and convince people, to try and convince hardworking people, especially when we're talking about going to New York, we're talking about going to New York where people people can't afford to move out of their parents' house because it's just so expensive to live. Where people are being pushed out of the city by opulence and 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 and, and just 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 ridiculousness from the financial industry. So so you can miss me seriously. With all that Bernie only talks about white issues. Bernie has white male privilege. I'm sorry. The son of immigrants who worked his way up and started out of a community college and then went to school versus someone whose daddy paid her way and then she went on to Yale and then married into, you know, a political dynasty. Mm, yeah. All privilege is not the same. You can't just say, oh, you're white. You have white privilege. You know, we've talked about this before. Privilege has, has, has levels to it. There are so many different things going on. And we're talking about two white candidates right now. So trying to convince us that one is, is white and more anti-black than the other is really ridiculous. Just look at the records, look at the speeches, just just, just see what's going on out there. Cause I'm really fucking tired. Excuse my language, I'm so sorry. I just found out my daughter actually got her friends from high school to start watching us. So I really do need to start watching my language. But what I will say is like, get out there cause there's so much going right on right now and grassroots needs to kill this. We are making a difference, right? There's so much going on right now. And I really need everyone to wake up. You know, this this piece with Soledad O'Brien, I really think that in terms of Black Lives Matter being an issue for the campaign, black the, the, the issue, the police, the police issue, the issues that have been raised, it's a very valuable conversation. It's a conversation that we've been having internally and trying to get people to pay attention to for decades right now. And I just need you all to understand that we need to keep fighting to make sure our issues are on the table. So if Bernie Sanders is not the perfect candidate, because I don't think he's a perfect candidate, I have yet to find any black person or person of color supporting him who thinks he's a perfect candidate. Now some of y'all are the folks, oh my God, he's gonna save us. Ain't nobody gonna save you, darling. This ain't a life vest we're being thrown here. You gotta work. 
you got to um <laughs> you gotta work you need to tread water okay because this is we in this for the long haul and you got to dig in now i'm going to pause for a minute and check on my partner for the evening to see um the other thing that was really interesting that came up today um was you know tone down for what so we are like bernie 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 folks progressive army y'all are killing it with these hashtags right now we, we heard from leslie last night um with um you know bernie mimi white uh one of my bernie mimi white tweets with like i think it got shared like 400 times um <laughs> you know so um today i think it started last night but today was toned down for what because you know hillary clinton's campaign basically said they would not agree to do any more um debates with bernie sanders unless he changed his tone they didn't like how he was talking to her huh it's really funny i love the internet i'm so happy we live in this technologically advanced society that we do because there's this thing called google and there are these awesome clips and articles from like you know all these different news outlets like it's it's pretty cool in 2008 i believe it was january 2008 actually the clinton campaign pulled the same nonsense with then senator barack obama because <laughs> they didn't like his strong tone huh really and you know senator obama pointed out then and it holds true absolutely now no bernie sanders is not senator obama they are two different people two different campaigns however 2008 hillary is 2006 hillary 2016 Hillary. 2016 just a little bit more polished. She just trying to iron out the edges a little bit better. But um, some of the same stuff is seeping through. The whole tone, you know, she doesn't like her record being pointed out. She doesn't like being told when she's distorting the truth. She doesn't like those things. You know, her her followers do not like those things. This is this is a problem because it's not nice because you're giving the Republicans ammo. Huh? They got the internet just like us. These aren't Republican talking points. These are real talking points. These exist. These exist. And if it makes you that uncomfortable, you should really take another look at your candidate. Because I looked at my candidate. I know my candidate. When my daddy sat me down back in, I think it was May and June, was like, you know, you should really give Bernie Sanders a look. Right, because black people don't support Bernie Sanders. But my, my daddy, another Brooklyn boy, is a Bernie fan. Been one for like 10, 15 years now. Um... So when my dad sat down and said, you know, you really need to look at Bernie Sanders because he's unknown, because this requires so much work and effort, we have to be well-versed. We have to be knowledgeable about, about our campaign, his platform, his past, his present, his future. We got to know this stuff. So we need to, you know, the enthusiasm is there. The excitement is there. But we need to be having those direct face-to-face -face conversations with people. And it took me... A learning curve like i'm new to this i know people say well i've never done this before i've never been involved before what's a learning curve you know um it's a learning curve i've been so blessed to meet people like stacy has come on you know you guys met niecy last week too um and yay but um i have a guest yay who's awesome and fabulous and has some really great stuff to share with you this evening but I'm just going to say, like, we all need to just get in there and, and get involved. And this is great because our conversation goes right into this. But um, there are so many ways to be involved and be engaged and active. And now I'm going to kick it over to my buddy. Will you please introduce yourself, guest? You can hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Awesome. All right, perfect. Uh, my name is Dr. Nkuma Subba, Jr. Uh, you want me to just go and tell you?